wonderful cloud community and welcome back to our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by the brilliant John Furrier. John, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing great, feeling good. We've got day three here, another day tomorrow, wall-to-wall -to -wall coverage. We're already over 100 and something videos live, getting them hitting on You're YouTube. holding up well. And then, you know, the cloud show is just popping. It's back to pre-pandemic levels. The audience is here. What recession? But, but there is one coming, but apparently <laughs> doesn't seem to be in unnoticed for the cloud community. I think we'll be talking a little bit about that in our next interview in the, in the State of the Union, not just our union, but the, the general global economy and the, and the climate there with some fabulous guests from Software One. Please welcome Neil and Bernd. Welcome to the show, guys. How you doing? Great, thank Great. you. Really Great. good. Yeah, like you said, just getting over the jet lag. Yeah, yeah, pretty good today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we did it today. I love that, Neil. Since you're smiling and I can feel your energy, tell us a little bit about Software One and what y'all do. Yeah, so Software One, we're a software and cloud solutions provider. We're in 90 countries. We have 65,000 customers. Just a few. Yeah, and we, we really focus on being close to the customers and helping customers through their software and cloud journey. So we. We transact, we sell software in cloud, 10,000 different ISVs, and then on top of that, we add wow. a lot of services around the spend optimization, FinOps we'll talk about as well, and lots of other areas. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really a large scale partner in this, in this space. That's, that's awesome. FinOps, cost optimization, pretty much all we've been talking about here on theCUBE. <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. very much a hot topic. I'm actually excited about this, and Baron, I'm going to throw this one to you first. We haven't actually done a proper definition of what FinOps is on the show, at the show yet. What is FinOps? Well, largely speaking, it's cloud cost optimization. But for us, it's, it's a lot more than for others. That's our superpower. We do it all. We do the technology side, but we also do the licensing side. So we have a differentiated offering. If you would look at the uh, six hours of application migration, we do it all. Not even an Accenture does it all. And that is our differentiation. You know, yes, yesterday Adam Celeste was on the keynote, he's like waving his hands around, saying, hey, we got, if you want to <laughs> tighten your belt, you know, come to the cloud. I'm like, wait a minute. In 2008, when the last recession, Amazon wasn't a factor. They were small. Now they're massive, they're huge, they're a big part That's of the point, economic John. equation. What does belt tightening mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, like, do customers just go to the marketplace? Do they go to you guys? There's a lot of moving parts now in how they're buying software and they're fine tuning their cloud too. It's not just eliminate budget, it's fine tune the machine, it's if you will. Make a smarter cloud. Well, explain this the phenomenon, how people are tackling this cost optimization, cloud optimization, because yeah. they're not going to stop building. No. They're just right sizing and, yeah. and tuning and cutting. Yeah, we see, of course, with so many customers in so many countries, we have a lot of different views on maturity, and we see customers taking the FinOps journey at different paces. But fundamentally, what we see is that it's more of an afterthought and coming in at a panic stage rather than building it and engaging with it from the beginning and doing it continuously. And really, that's the, that's the huge opportunity. And AWS is a big uh, believer in this of continued optimization of the cloud is a confident cloud. A confident cloud means you'll do more with it. If you lose confidence in that bill, in what, how much it's costing you, you're going to retract. And so it's really about making sure all customers know exactly what's in there, how it's optimized, restacking, reformatting applications, getting more out of the microservices, and getting more value out of the cloud, and that will help them uh, tighten that belt. So the euphoric enthusiasm of previous years of building, water just falling out of the pipes, leaving the lights on when you go to bed. I mean, that's kind of the mentality. People were, were not, really, I won't say they were not paying attention, but there was some, just keep going, we're all good. Now it's like, whoa, whoa, we can turn that service off when no one's using it or, set, or do automation. So there's a lot more of that mindset emerging. We're hearing that for the first time, price performance, being mindful of what's on and off. Yeah. Yeah. Common sense, basically. Yeah, but it's not just that the lights are on <laughs> and the faucets are open, it's also the air condition is running. So the FinOps <laughs> Foundation is, uh, is estimating that about a third of uh, cloud spend is waste. And that's where FinOps comes in. We can wow. help customers be more efficient in the cloud and lower their cloud spend while yeah. doing the same or more. So, so let's dig in a little bit there. How do you apply FinOps when migrating to the cloud? Well, you start with the business case, uh, and you're not just looking at infrastructure costs like most people do, you also look at software licensing costs. For example, if you run SQL on-premise, you have an enterprise 
uh, agreement, uh, but if you move it to the cloud, you may actually take a different, more favorable licensing agreement and save a lot of money. And these things are hidden, they're not to be seen, but they need to be part of the business case. When you look, when you look at the modernization trend, um, we had an analyst on our session with me, Dave Vellante, and uh, ZS Curvella from um, ZK uh, Consulting. He had an interesting comment, he said, spend more in cloud to save more, which is a mindset that it doesn't, doesn't come across right away. Wait a minute, spend more, save more. You can do that right now with the cloud. So this is kind of the thesis of FinOps. You don't have to cut. Yeah. You just kind of cut the waste out, but still spend and build if you're smart. There's yeah. a lot more of that going on. What, is that, what does that mean? I mean, yeah, a good, a good example of this is, you know, we're, we're the largest Microsoft provider in the world. Um, and when, of course, when you move Microsoft workloads to the cloud, you don't, maybe you don't want a server. You can go serverless, right? So you know, it may not win the server. Burton said SQL, right? So it's not just about putting applications in the cloud and workloads in the, the cloud. It's about modernizing them and then really taking advantage of what you can really do in the cloud. And I think that's where the customers are still pretty immature. They're still on that journey of throwing stuff in there and then realizing actually they can take way more advantage of, of what services are in there to reduce the amount and get even more in there. Yeah, yeah and so the security, oh good, do you want to say something? So I was just building on it, the, the, the stereotypical image of uh, cloud customer <laughs> is the marketing person with a credit card, yeah. right? Uh, and there are many of them, and they all buy their own cloud, and uh, companies have a hard time consolidating the spend, pulling it together, even within a country, but across countries, across the globe, it's really, really hard. And Silo if you too, yeah. pull it all together, you get a better discount, you spend more yeah. to save more. Yeah, and also there's a human piece. We had an intern two summers ago playing with our cloud. We're on the cloud with our media plus stack. Left the service, was playing around, doing some tinkering, and like, where's this bill? What is this extra $20,000 came from? He just he left the service on. It, so, again, it's a really good way. point, actually. It's something that we see almost every day right now, which is customers also not understanding what they've put in the cloud and what the implications of spikes are and also therefore having really robust monitoring and, and processes and having a partner that can look after that for them. Otherwise, we've got yeah. we've customers where they've been really shocked about not doing things the right way because they've empowered the business, but also not with the maturity that the business needs yeah. to have that responsibility. And that's a great point, new people coming in and or people being platooned through new jobs are getting used to the cloud, that's a great point. Yeah. I got, that brings yeah. up my security question, because this comes up a lot. So that's where there's a lot of spend, of people dialing up more security, Obviously, people try everything with security, every tool, every platform, <laughs> to throw everything at the problem. How does that impact the FinOps equation? Because DevSecOps is now part of everything, okay, we're moving security to the CICD pipeline, that's cool, check. Cloud native applications, microservices, event-based services, check. But now you got more security. How does that factor into the cost side? What do you guys look at that? Can you share your thoughts on how, how your customers are managing yeah. their security posture without getting kind of over the barrel, if you will? Yeah, since we are at AWS reInvent, right, we can talk about the well-architected framework of AWS, and there's six components to it, and there's reliability, there's security, cost, performance, quality, operational quality, and, and sustainability. And so when we think about migrating apps to the cloud or modernizing them in the cloud, Security is always a table stakes. And we, I mean, it has to be. Yeah, go ahead. And we really like what AWS is doing with us on, on that. We partner very closely on, on that area. And to give you a parallel example, on Microsoft, I don't feel very good about that at the moment. We see a lot of customers right now that get hacked. Um, and normally it's... Yeah, uh, such a topic. It's, uh, you mean on Azure? Uh, yeah, uh, and, and what happens is that they're normally it's a crypto mining script that the customer comes in, they, they come in as the customer, Shocking. they get hacked, and then they... And we, you know, we saw an incident the other day where we had 2,100 security incidents in a minute where it all like exploded on the customer side. Um, and so it, that's also really important is that the, the customer's understanding that security element, also who they're letting in and out of their organization, mm -hmm. and also the responsibility they have if things go bad. Um, that, and that's, that's also an, a, not aware. Like when they get hacked, are they, are they responsible for that? Are they not responsible? Is the provider one shared to responsibility? Yeah. Well, that that security There's data lake is key. The, op the sure. open cybersecurity schema framework. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. To your point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It yeah, it, it is it is fascinating, and it does require a lot of collaboration. What other trends? What other big challenges are you seeing? You're obviously working with customers at incredible scale. What are some of the other problems you're helping them tackle? 
I, I think we, we know we work with customers from SMB uh, all the way up to enterprise and public sector. But what we see um, is more in the enterprise space, we, we see a lot of customers willing to commit a lot to the cloud based on all the themes that we've said, but not commit uh, financially for all the P&Ls that they run and all the business units of all the different companies that they may own in different countries. So it's like, how can I commit but not be responsible on the, on the hook for the bill? that comes in. Yeah. And we see this all the time right now, and we're working closely with AWS on this, and we see the ability to for customers to commit centrally, but decentralized billing, decentralized optimization, and decentralized FinOps. So there's that educational layer within the business units, who owns the PL, where they get that fitness, and they own what they're spending, but the company as an own can commit to AWS. And I think that's a big trend that we're seeing is centralized commitment but decentralized yeah. ownership in that model. That and that's where sense. the marketplaces kind of fit in yeah. as well as Absolutely, a touch yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to add some more on that? I mean, that? the marketplace, if you're going to cut your bill, you go to the marketplace right there, you want a single dashboard or your marketplace. Mm -hmm. Where's the cuts, where are the customers, what's the customer going to do when they're going to tighten their belt? What do they do? What's, the, what's their workflow? Marketplace, what are they, what's the process? Well, on marketplaces, you, the larger companies will have a private marketplace with uh, dedicated pricing, managed service, they can call off, but that's for them, the software off the shelf. They still have the data centers, they still have all the legacy and they need to do the, which ones are we going to keep, which ones are we going to retire, we repurchase, relicense, rehost, relocate, all of those That's things. your wheelhouse. It's a three, yes, it's our wheelhouse. It's a three to five year process for many, most companies. This could be a tailwind for you guys. This is, a, this is like a good time. I mean, FinOps is super cool and super hot right now. Not that you're biased. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it's great, it's, it's great to see it because, you know, we were, uh, we, well, we are the magic quadrant leader in software asset management, which is a pedigree of ours. But we always had to convince customers to do that because they're always worried, oh, what are you going to find? Do I have an audit? Do I have to give Oracle some more money or SAP some more money? So there's always like, you know, don't how, look, don't ask, don't how, tell. how compliant do I really want to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is anyone paying attention to well, this? Well, yeah. FinOps, it's all upside. Like, it's all upside. And so it's completely flipped. And yeah. now we speak to most customers that are building FinOps internally. And then they're like, hold on a minute, I'm a bank. Why do I have 100 people doing FinOps? Right. And like, so that's what the trend that we're seeing because they just get more and more value out of it all the time. Well, also the key mindset is the, the consumption-based model of cloud. You mentioned Oracle, because they're stuck in that, whoa, 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 how many servers are licensed? And they're, they're stuck in that, that extortion. Yeah, exactly. And now they got cloud, yeah. once you're on a variable, What's the downside? Exactly, and then you, say you can you can look at all the applications, see where you can go serverless, see where you can go native services, yeah. all that sort of stuff is all upside. And yeah. for the major workloads like SAP and Oracle and Microsoft, we find that customers save in the millions. Well, just on that point, those VMware, SAP, these workloads, they're being rolled and encapsulated into in containers and Kubernetes runtimes moved into the cloud, they're being refactored. Right. So that's a whole nother ball game. Yes. A lift and shift <laughs> usually doesn't save you any money, so that, that's relocation with containers may I mean, save you money, but in some cases you have to There's more refactor. SAP in the cloud now than ever before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before we take him to the challenge portion, we have a little quiz for you, or not a quiz, but a little, a little prompt for you in a second. I want to talk about your role. You, you have a very important role at the FinOps Foundation. Can one of you tell me more about that? Neil, why don't you go? All right, so yeah, I mean, we're a founding member of the FinOps organization. You can tell I'm super passionate about it as well. I wanted to keep uh, that yeah. FinOps club. I'm like a poster uh, boy for FinOps uh, right now. It's great, yeah. I love the energy. We have uh, some wager down that is going to go up on the table and dance. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready for it. We're waiting for that performance here on theCUBE this week. I promise that we keep everyone up and alert. And I suppose what side. our value to the foundation is, is first of all, the, the feedback we get from all our customers, right? We can bring that back as an organization to that. Also, as one of the founding members, we're the, one of the only ones that really deliver services and platforms. So we'll work with Cloud Health, Cloudability, our own platform as well, and we'll do that. And we have over 200 practitioners completely dedicated to FinOps as well. So it's a great foundation. They're doing an amazing job, and uh, we're super proud to be part of that. Yeah, I love that. You're contributing to the community as well as supporting it looking after your customers. Yeah. All right, so our new tra uh, tradition here on theCUBE at reInvent is we're looking for your 30 second Instagram reel, hot take, sizzle of thought leadership <laughs> on the 
number one takeaway, most important theme of the show this year? Baron, do you want to go first? Of the reinvent show or yeah. our conversation? Both, whatever. Hey, you can interpret that however you want. We've gotten some <laughs> unique interpretations throughout the week, so we're, uh, we're open. Everybody's looking for the superpower uh, to do more with less in the cloud. That will be the theme of 2023. Perfect, I love that. 10 seconds. You're my kind of man. Very efficient. Very you're, you're clearly providing an efficient solution based and on an that introvert. answer. And an introvert. We yeah. don't talk that much. That's <laughs> it's the Swiss. Go, and what about you, Neil? Give us your hot I'm going to steal your comment. It's exactly what I was thinking earlier. Tech is super resilient, and tech is there for customers when they want to invest and modernize and do fun stuff, and, and they're also there for when they want to save money. So we're, we're always like a constant, and you see that here. It's like, this is, it's always happening here, always happening. It is always happening. You really can feel the energy. I hope that the show is just as energetic and fun for you guys as the last few minutes here on theCUBE has been. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, thank you very much for having us. And you. thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation about FinOps, cloud confidence, and all things AWS reInvent. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada. With John Furrier, my name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.